So I know everybody's been waiting for an update and uh, I just haven't had time to get over to the shop so I thought I'd take you on a quick tour here. I had just a minute to get over to the shop here. So there's been some comments that maybe this is a wire recorder but you can clearly see that it is not a wire recorder and I wish I could get in there better but that is absolutely a magnetic head. And I sent some pictures of this machine over to the Pavic Museum here in Minnesota. And uh, they seem to think that this chassis has been painted. Uh, clearly the paint is very old, so it must have been done a long time ago. So there's more and more evidence that's starting to mount that maybe this top transport part here was like from a kit or from the back of a magazine or something and that this housing here is actually a, uh, a radio chassis repurposed or something. Whoever did it did a really good job, so I, I'm not sure. So, But anyway, uh, like I was saying in my other video, you would load the tape on here, you pull this head all the way up, and then as it gets to the end of the, the track here, it, it re it bounces down it's got it's it's actually an auto reverse mechanism so the tape winds along and as this gets to the end it bounces down it would then reverse and etc so uh, you can actually hear it click as it goes around but as the tape comes up there's this little lever here and as this little lever hits the end it hits a stop in there and then bounces it down so as this goes back and forth and 24 times it bounces this all the way down or you can manually move it down and of course this needs to be looped up a little bit it needs some help to move down there but this is a motor stop start switch here and then the controls on the front are tone and on off there is a light here, and I'll be curious to see if this is just a pilot light or if it's some sort of a record indicator. And then you've got a record, play, and stop switch. I have the tubes out of it at the moment, and one of them here, unfortunately, so this one is, is good, but this one, is it this one? No, it's this one here. Unfortunately, this beautiful old tongue saw has died, and... Uh, it's a 6AQ5, there we go, cameras in focus. And so I went on eBay and bought a new 6AQ5 to put in there. But this was also something that was interesting that I saw. So um, this appears to be lead solder that somebody wrapped around this tube and then took a hot iron and just ran up the sides of it to melt it together to get it to, to stick. They made their own lead shield so this must be the high gain tube uh, for the recording circuitry and they were trying to reduce some noise in it so that was interesting uh, other tubes here uh, 12ax7 and okay that's the 6aq5 and then this one i believe is the rectifier yes the 6x4 rectifier and then um i it's written down in there what this one is i can't remember but uh Let's take a quick look at the back of this. Now that the tubes are out. This is a wooden chassis, but this plate almost looks homemade by the way this lettering was done, by the way it was bent here, that sort of thing. But whoever did it did a really, really good job. Let me see if I can get this light to focus in here. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, part of why I've been delayed so much is I've been wanting to try and find a different camera. I'm doing this with my Android phone and it really, really sucks. I have to be so far away to get everything in picture. And there's the back of the volume control knob. And see, this cutout is really, really clean. But, yeah, and there's no nuts, it seems, to hold this motor down in here. 
or to hold this uh, transport down in here so it just lifts up. But that the transport is clearly professionally made. So uh, like I said, there's evidence leaning that this was maybe from the back of a magazine or something is all I can figure and that somebody maybe hand built this. So uh, I'm going to attempt to get this out of here today so I can make a list of all the capacitors I need to order. And uh, I while I had a minute over here at the shop, I thought I would bring you along. And uh, let me uh, pull the transport out of here and we'll take a close look at it. Hang on one second. Okay, I have the transport lifted out. And there are, is more and more evidence that this was homemade. If you look in the corners here, you can see where they drilled and cut it. And uh, I wish I could get a better view of this. But this is, I think you can see the original color here. There we go. I think that was light brown. And then down inside here, you can see where somebody wrote with a pen 6AQ5. Um, 12AX7. And can I get this light in here to show? Does that one say what it is? It does not say what that one is. So. So there's the inside of it. I don't know if we can determine a date code from that. Is that 52 maybe? And let's see here, can we read what this transformer says? What does that say? 8121 10-1 it looks like, if that means anything to anyone. And here is the bottom of the transport. Oh, this phone is just the worst for taking, trying to t take videos. And I will do some more in-depth on this, but it's nice that this all just unplugged from the bottom. Nicely balanced flywheel there. There's the bottom of the motor switch and the head. And it looks like there's a pilot light Looks like there's a pilot light here. So, interesting. All right, let me uh, continue pulling this apart and I'll bring it right back. Well, the mysteries deepen. So, I uh, was able to get the knobs off the lower section here, but the volume knob is in a really, really deep well and none of my Allen wrenches will fit it. These knobs are really heavy and they look homemade. Whoever did it, did a really good job. And the other interesting thing is, on the back of this escutcheon that says erase, record, play, it says tune on it. Hmm, maybe this was a radio chassis that has been repurposed. This uh, black lacquer is, is flaking off here in spots and if we look at the electronics we can see that this plate is just made from a bent piece of metal but all the capacitors and stuff in here are I mean all the parts all the for the most part are riveted in here so that's really really interesting and so these are solar mini caps in here I don't see any date codes on anything just yet and for all you safety police this has not been powered up in a very very long time I have never powered it up and I've had it for several months now so 
I don't know if that's a date code or not on there. But I'm going to have to replace all of these caps in here. And I do see that this pot down here has got a little burn mark right here. I'm going to have to test that and see if that's any good. And um, let's see if we can see the pot in here and see if there's any date codes. I don't see much of anything. It's probably written on the edge. Let's see, there's a there is a pot in here. But I don't know if that's a date code on there or not. Complicated little bugger. Has a lot more inside than I expected, so I'm going to have to spend some time and draw out the circuit. If this thing was homemade, whoever did it really did a good job. It's possibly a machinist or something. See, that looks like that was all hacked out. This has got to be a repurposed radio chassis. Oh, yeah, the uh, dial indicator from the bulb, I was able to get it out. It looks like they made this, like this part is screwed into this homemade piece of clear plastic that they drilled and machined out. Somebody put a lot of time and effort into this thing. I mean, a lot of time and effort. So this is going to be fun. Okay, so here's some more interesting things here. The more I look at this, I find, for example, look at how they, they actually cut this wafer switch or they cut this brass strip to fit in here and then soldered it down for some shielding. And look at these metal plates that they added in here and then soldered wires to them to ground to shield the, the switch sections in here. I see this cap says 72234 on it also. I don't think that's a date code. If it is, it's an old cap that they had laying around or something because that clearly this is clearly not 1934. Now see this says 52 on it and the tubes <coughs> have 52 date codes on them also. Some yeah 2952 and I think that is a date code. Let's take a look at this tube here. If this we can read this one. I don't think we can. That might be a 43 date code on that one. Rectifier. And yeah, what about this uh, 12AX7 here? I think that's 52 right there. So it looks like these tubes are dated 1952. And this one oh it's a 6j7 there that's where i saw it if you can read that there this one does not seem to have a date code it's possibly under this lead sleeve which i'm not going to pull off but so there's evidence to suggest that this is at least 1952 or later i pulled the motor off the bottom and I have pulled the C-clips off of the reel tables here so I can flip it over and uh, take a look at the top. You can see that there was a spot here for another bulb. And you can clearly see that this plate was stamped out. This, this is definitely professionally made. Yeah, and here's the motor here. Maybe this was a kit 
or something. Okay, I have the uh, top plate off the transport mechanism. And here is one of the real tables. Machined cast aluminum or pop metal or zinc or whatever it is. And inside of here, this is interesting. This side has a spring and a washer and a piece of felt on it. This side does also, but the top of it has been dimpled to capture it so it doesn't it doesn't come off of there. But this side was not. So they must want extra tension on that side. And it's hard to see, but the motor shaft would come up from right there underneath there and would run these two wheels. Now, I was convinced, and now that I see, wrongly so, that this was auto-reverse, that it would record in both directions. But looking at this arrangement now, this appears to be auto-rewind so that it would hit the end of the tape and... If I can shift it the way it is but it would start to play and then when it gets to the other side this roller would engage and would rewind it when it hits the end then it goes back into the forward play mode so this must be an auto rewind function not auto reverse Wow oh that's cool And of course, because this is sitting here, it's uh, so is this forward play, and then this would be this must be forward, and I'm betting it tape travels that way. Oh, oh, maybe it goes this way, and then this rubs on the outside of this drum for forward. Can I put this one in here? Yeah, yeah, I know. Just put the phone down and do it. I know. But that's what it is. Okay. Oh, and this phone doesn't focus. So, in the forward mode, this gets pulled over here, and it rims drive this direction. And when it reaches the end, that more maybe that's that's that direction and this way then rubs on the inside of this drum for rewind aha auto rewind <laughs> oh this thing just gets cooler and cooler yeah how cool is that so the mystery 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 deepens Oh, I just noticed something here, too. I think this knob might have been... Oh! It was a uh, bronzy gold color. And somebody painted it black. Yeah, good luck ever finding these rollers, but... They feel like they're okay, like they... I mean, they still grab. I think we can just clean this up, oil it up a little bit, and I think it's going to be fine.